Anti pay to win has kind of become a phenomenon on YouTube. I myself making a countless variety of videos targeting pay to win servers and trolling them or crashing them and stuff like that. But I feel like I've given off the wrong impression with these videos. And I think I have led people in the wrong direction of thinking when it comes to anti pay to win. Because I think it's getting to the point now where people will see any server selling anything and think that it's pay to win and that it needs to be you know blown up which isn't entirely true because servers do need to make money in order to stay up and i kind of thought for a little while on how i could make a video kind of going over this and i thought i should talk to somebody who has a better understanding of how servers work and somebody that is already in the anti pay to win community so i thought why don't i call up mr epic and we can just sit down and talk about anti pay to win and the point of all of this so that's what this video is today i know this is a little bit different for all of the reoccurring viewers here but make no mistake this will be i think worth your while so i hope you guys enjoy it and yeah let's get into it the tweets you did if you recall the ones where um it was like, you think pay to win's like, you don't think it's, I don't know if you don't think it's okay, but like. Well, I dislike it, but I understand why it's required because most servers wouldn't be able to stay afloat without it. Basically my overall point of view. My general, I was always also against pay to win basically since I started YouTube, like way back in 2020 as well. And then when I started running my server throughout in 2021 and gradually over time, I kind of began to realize that a lot of servers who don't have free advertising through a YouTube channel like mine would literally not be able to make enough money to stay afloat if they didn't become pay to win. And I, after, I did a video early this year as well, I'm not sure if you've seen it, where I, I tracked how much money a bunch of servers made through their public server store. And I found out that basically a bunch of pay to win servers were either making zero money or losing money monthly. And they literally were not able to like uh, make a profit out as they were. And that's fine if you want to, if they want to do the server like that and they didn't want to make money from it. But for a lot of servers which actually want to grow and, and you know, develop new game modes and get bigger, like you, you just need money at the end of the day. And the only way to get money really is to become pay to win. But with all that being said, the one thing which I do dislike and wouldn't agree with still is gambling. And basically all of the pay to win servers still have gambling in the form of crate keys, even that potion that on that dupe we just did. So that's my perspective, basically. What would you think would be like the goldilocks zone of like a server where there's no gambling but they could still like make money well the, there's a few the, the, it's always going to be on like a scale right like a lot of the actual modern smps if you ignore the all the gambling and the crates they actually do it pretty well because most of the time how they work is that as you play more and more you have less and less reason to need to spend money because a lot of the, the perks that you would get from um, the non-gambling related things would be items xp money what yada 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 and as you play more you generally need that less and less whereas some servers though like purple prison for example they're set up in a way so that as you play more and more it gets harder and harder to progress to like the next um what you may call them prison wards or whatever and that's where they entice people to uh, donate more as they continue to play so it's sort of like a similar model to games like clash of clans where as you play more get, you get higher town halls it takes longer to do upgrades more expensive it takes longer to get from the next point to the next point basically so i think a lot of the modern smp is actually pretty good if you ignored the gambling what about the donut smp that's when a lot of people troll a lot uh what's your thoughts on that one do you think that that is kind of like going over the line when it comes to the whole gambling thing? Well, like I said, I do dislike the gambling, uh, but Donut SMP is a bit, of a, a bit of a unique server because I know they have very high operation costs because of their unique infrastructure. So I don't know how much they end up having to uh, pay monthly, but I would argue it's significantly higher than most other servers. That being said though, I do think they could probably make do and uh, you know not suffer too much of a negative profits if they got rid of the, the crates and just sold other things like perks instead. But I don't know for I couldn't speak too much on Donut SMP because they're a pretty unique server in general. I do know that the owner said he makes like a shit ton from the server. Like Oh yeah, for sure. I mean he's got like three thousand players. Like he said he'd like if he was a doctor, he'd make ten times less. Is there any 
world where getting that much from, I assume it's like the crate keys that make that much, right? Is there any world where that's valid? I mean, is the server cost that much where it would eat half of that? If it's actually like 10 times more than a doctor, isn't that like a million dollars a year or something like that? Well, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming he's splitting a significant profit of that with his developer who did the back end. So it, uh, I don't know if it would all him, but I mean, at the end of the day, Donut SMP's play account probably going to make, he probably is making a lot of money. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And that's because he has a lot of players. But, you know, ba basically a year ago now, if you went back exactly a year ago, Donut SMP had like 100 players or something like that. They, if they, the thing is, they, they've ultimately been entirely successful. Like they are like one of the 1% servers where they've actually managed to not only grow, but grow to like such a large point that they are like, probably one of the, the biggest SMP right now. So they probably are making a lot more money than I guess you could you could say they should be making. So I don't think discussing them is really probably the best idea because they're kind of like an outlier. We should probably look at like the average SMP server, which is probably like, you know, 100 to 300 players or maybe the average network is like below 500 players because those are probably the servers that make up majority of the player base, even though they're not, even though they're, you know, not as well known, just all together, they would have the most players combined. Like I know some servers, I don't know about Donuts because they advertise through TikTok, but there's a server called MC Complex, if you've heard of it, they get like around 1K players daily. Mm -hmm. I think they spend a, a combined total of close to 50,000 a month just to have high uh, rankings on voting websites. And uh, they probably also do make a lot of money because they're very pay to win. But that's just to put into perspective that a lot of some of the real top servers are spending exuberant amounts per month to, you know, actually keep their play counts that high. That's a big business, that's for sure. A lot it of is. money involved, you know. So it's clear that, you know, they got to make money. So they do yeah. have to do some sometimes questionable things, you know what I'm saying? But like, do you think that the, you know, a lot of people crash or like they crash the economy or they'll crash the server. I've done it. You've done it. A lot of other yeah, people yeah. have. Do you think that's valid as well? Or do you think it's kind of pointless in a way? Well, in this, here's, here's, I'll explain. You probably, this is probably quite different to a lot of, a lot of other um, not um, anti-paid when YouTubers would say. But there's two things. Number one is that in the grand scheme of things, the duping and crashing, ultimately, it's never, it's like, it's like very, a very, very, very small amount of damage because they can easily roll it back. Like, unless you're going to like go through and do it days and days over, it's good. It's never really going to cause a lot of damage. I'm pretty sure like me and JupaTube understand that. But the reason I like to do them is because it's a good way of raising awareness against gambling. So for example, if I were to make a video talking about, I don't know, anti-pay to win, like a nice normal video essay, I say, you yeah, know, this is bad. This, these are making this, this much money and you guys shouldn't use crates, right? I can make one video like that. I'll probably get like, I don't know, maybe 200, 300,000 views after a month. And then I can't keep making that video over and over and over, right? But what I can do is I can make duping videos, which not only get significantly more views, meaning more attention, but I can continue making them multiple times. And in every single one of those, I can use it to kind of raise awareness to say like, these servers are basically making people, you know, gamble. They have a lot of gambling mechanics. And rather than trying to get the servers to remove them, because ultimately in the day, unless Microsoft forces them to, they're not going to. The way I view it is that I make I spread awareness to the players to hopefully make it so they are more wise with their spending decisions and decide not to spend money on crates or gambling or at least they're aware of it on servers. So when I do the videos, for me, it's more about raising awareness about why you shouldn't buy crates and, and you know involve yourself in gambling on these servers. And that's probably, the, and at least in my opinion or my experience, that's the best way to raise awareness and get the most eyes on it. I can agree with that. I mean, do you think that's what the whole anti-pay to win, I guess, quote unquote, movement is about? Do you think it's about no, just raising awareness? Not at all. No, not at all. Most a lot of people are actually don't like a lot. Of, this is also kind of my fault, but a lot of people in the anti-pay to win movement don't actually know what is allowed by Mojang and what isn't allowed by Mojang. Like I know that even though I th think gambling's bad, technically by their commercial usage guidelines, servers are allowed to feature crates and gambling. So I know that they're not gonna get removed. So me doing this is not in the in a in a, the goal to get it removed, but trying to raise awareness and maybe get get to the point where servers start to see, oh, we don't want to involve gambling because we you know we've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people talk bad about it, like mine. And we don't want people to we don't want people to kids to have the chance to gamble in our server. And maybe they will remove it themselves. Whereas I think a lot of the anti pay to win movement is trying to like crash, like trying to brute force servers to to shut down rather than making a change, right? And in a way, trying to get Mojang or Microsoft to act upon them. Or I guess my approach is a bit different because I'm a bit more informed on that on the commercial usage guidelines and what's allowed and what's not.
But I mean, I don't blame anyone for that. Like I was exactly the same like before I started running a server. So it's, it's like I, I, I was the same as most of the anti-paid win people like two years ago as well. Would you say you became more informed when you opened your own server? 100%. Like there's so many things. Like it's also not just the, the, the player's fault. The, the thing is, let me show you this quickly actually. So when, you know, a lot of the people in the anti pay to win, they kind of refer to either the EULA or the TOS when they talk about how what pay to win servers are not allowed, right? I'm sure you've heard people say it before. When in actuality, what they should be referring to is there's a thing called the commercial usage guidelines here. And that basically has all the publicly available rules surrounding what you can and can't do with a server. So if here, I'll send you here. If you control F and go down to servers and hosting, it has guidelines there. The problem is, while a lot of this stuff is pretty clear, there's also a lot of things they just do not include in the use, the this commercial usage guidelines that a lot of servers technically are, do, are like are breaking. So, for example, somewhere here they mention that you're not allowed to gamble. Yeah. All servers, entitlements, and advertising are suitable for all audience in all ages. For example, gambling, pornography, violence, terrorism, exclusive lyrics, or other unsafe, mature content are not allowed, basically, right? And yeah. So in that regard, you would think crates aren't allowed. But then when they've actually blocked or contacted servers about the various things, they've actually gone ahead and... Um, let me show you what I, the screenshot here. They've actually gone ahead and made it clear that crates and such gambling methods are allowed. So let me, let me find it. I made a video about this a few months ago, and I got a bunch of screenshots from other server owners. And this, is, this is sent from Mojang enforcement team to a, a Minecraft server that they're talking about, um, I think got blocked for something else and they asked about it to the server owner. So clearly they are allowed, right? But yeah. then why does the commercial usage guideline state that no gambling is allowed then? It's just so unclear. And there's even more information here actually. So my problem is that Mojang clearly have some sort of rules about what's, what is and what's not allowed, but it's not, the information isn't clear or publicly displayed anywhere that, and, that you would know unless you were a server owner. So it's very vague. Yeah, and it's also quite vague as well, yeah. So those are the actual rules surrounding what's allowed with crates and crate keys, and I'm assuming similar gambling on other servers, rather than what they say on the, on the public guidelines. I didn't know that until I, until I talked to other server owners, right? Like, how would you ever know that unless you had a server? Yeah, that's interesting how they don't actually specify that anywhere. Yep, exactly. There's a few other things as well, from what I've talked to server owners about, other things that aren't specified publicly on this website, but other server owners know because they've got in contact with the enforcement team before. But it's just stuff that you would never know unless you ran a server. And that's kind of what I think the problem is. And it's not necessarily the anti-paid win community's fault. It's just the general, there's not much clear information about what is allowed in the Minecraft server and what isn't. So a lot of people kind of, I think, have a bit of misguided, like not duping, but they don't really know what they're talking about when it comes to what is allowed and what isn't. And it's a bit their fault for not doing research, but it's ultimately Mo uh, Mojang's fault for not making it clear. What do you think Mojang should do to like improve this issue well if i, w I mean in my ideal world I've, 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 i'd obviously ban gambling so i guess i'd regulate it properly and remove crate and crate keys but i would also say that they should they should have like an official um server list or browser run by them where they can because a lot of the reason these servers need these kind of pay to win elements is advertising at the end of the day that is the biggest cost for a lot of these servers and so if there was kind of like a more centralized way of players to, uh, finding servers and being able to join them rather than just relying on big YouTubes or TikToks promoting them or um, voting websites where you have to spend exuberant amounts of money to be listed anywhere higher up enough, then these servers wouldn't need as much money to spend on advertising and thus they probably wouldn't need as much money from their pay to win donation perks and whatnot. So I'd say they just need a centralized way where pay people can find and discover servers to join. So for example, with my server, like we've like the reason we've been able to stay afloat as being non-pay to win for so long is because we have zero advertising costs. Whereas a lot of other servers around the similar size that I have or, or are non-pay to win or have tried to be non-pay to win are either like losing money every month or not able to grow beyond what they're at right now because they have to spend so much on advertising. So the big thing that these servers spend on besides like hosting, obviously, is advertising. Yeah, that's like 100%. the big thing. Probably, probably the biggest cost for most servers by far, I would say. So do, would you say Mojang should maybe add like a server list or something where it's easier to find these servers instead of having to go on like some third party website and like just scroll yeah. through it. So the way I guess I would do it is I guess in, I'm not sure how successful it's been on Roblox, but I know that um, Roblox has, you know, like they have like the actual website with all the server games filtered by category, right? So you have like, I don't know, mini games, you have like, like 
what are they called, tycoons or something. What Minecraft should have, I think, in the multiplayer, like when you click multiplayer or even just on a website that's official, is like, hey, here's the survival servers. Hey, here's Anarchy servers. Hey, here's this server. Hey, here's that server. And so it displays a whole big list of servers for people looking for whatever they want. And you can't pay to be there. Because if you can pay to be there, then it's going to give an innate advantage to the big servers who have got tons of resources to spend on money and won't. And it will basically lead to the small servers unable to grow. And I guess, you know, that's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be significantly better than what we have now. That kind of reminds me of like um, how Twitch operates. Like 99% of the viewers watch like yeah. the 0.1% of streamers and all the other like small streamers are left like high and dry. Like they, it's like they can't grow at all. That's kind of like what the server game sounds like. It's like... I mean... Even then, I would say Twitch is way better because at least you can't pay to be featured higher on Twitch, right? You could even if you if you buy view bots, you, there's a good chance you get banned. Whereas here, you can pay to get basically monopolize your presence on the voting websites. Like, I mean, you can probably see right now if you search up Minecraft, if you go to any of the voting websites, I guarantee you one of the servers will be featured at the top, if not in the top five, is MC Complex. Yeah, that's the one I see every time. Yeah, and that's because they're spending so much money, right? And so this, so if you think about it like this, it's like a cycle. These servers have a lot of money and a lot of resources because they have a lot of players. And because they have a lot of money, a lot of resources and a lot of players, they can spend more money to continue getting that. And so if you're a new server coming in, you don't have any money or you don't have much, you've got no players, you maybe got an SMP or something. How are you ever going to compete with such a server when you have nothing at the end of the day the way things are, the way things are right now money you need money if you want to run a successful minecraft server that's just a fact and there's not it's unavoidable at this point so would you say that to partially solve the whole gambling on servers you'd have to change how servers are actually like found or presented so that you know they don't have to spend as much to promote them well, yeah, so the issue is these servers are never going to change unless Mojang forces them to, right? They're going to make, they want to make as much money as possible. And the best way to do that is gambling. So if they're making as much money as possible through gambling and they don't have to change because Mo Mojang allows it, then why are they going to change in the first place, right? And so what I would say is that these, these servers, these established servers are probably never going to change as they are right now unless Mojang makes a change. But rather, we need to make the barrier of entry for Minecraft servers a bit lower so then these newer servers don't resort to having to add gambling in order to make enough money to be present on, you know, voting websites and whatnot. And then hopefully that gets to a point where it's a whole shift through, I guess, raising awareness, of, of like through GP news and whatnot about people trying to not, uh, you know, not spending money on gambling. But at the end of the day, unless Microsoft does anything, you know, nothing will really ever change. Do you think that Microsoft or Mojang would ever do anything? Uh, I mean, I would, I would, I would say no, but I wouldn't say that it's completely like off. You know, I, there is a, probably a chance they might act against gambling. I mean, some games have faced regulations for loot boxes in certain countries. Like I remember FIFA a while back, I think faced some regulations in some European countries. So I think that because of the, there are some chances that Mojang might end up regulating it. But the way I see it now, no, I don't think they will make a change like that. So wait, the you you think that maybe the only chance that it would get regulated is if it got banned or like regulated in like a country? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, why Mo Mojang don't care as long as these players or Microsoft doesn't care as long as these players keep playing the game and they I think they've got an understanding that the servers are going to keep using them and that if they got rid of it the servers would get upset or that this, a lot of servers would, you know, give them backlash in some way. I don't see them ever caring enough to remove gambling unless it hurt their bottom line, basically. And the only reason I can see that happening is through some sort of like legal regulation from a country. That's pretty crazy that that would be what would do it. Do you think community outcry would affect anything or do you think it would be pointless? At the end of the day, I think the only thing community outcry will affect are some of the newer server owners who are thinking of setting up servers and the players. And so, which is what, like what I said, trying to raise awareness surrounding why you shouldn't gamble. I don't think any community outcry, no matter how big or how large, would ever get the big established servers to change or would get Microsoft and Mojang to change. Because like I said, unless it hurts their bottom line, then they don't, they're not going to care. And you've already seen how vague the rules are, right? They already seemingly don't care that much about servers right now. That they have, they're, they're very vague in their commercial usage guidelines and everything's enforced unevenly and whatnot.